to The Book of Life, a show about Jewish books, music, film, and web. I'm Heidi Estrin. The Book of Life is a podcast service of the Feldman Library at Congregation B'nai Israel in Boca Raton, Florida. Additional support comes from the Association of Jewish Libraries. New Year at the Pier is April Halpern Whalen's new Rosh Hashanah picture book, based on the Tashlik ritual that takes place at Manhattan Beach in California each year. During a party at the Planet Esme book room, I pulled April aside to hear about this book and her other writing projects. April Halpern Wayland, your book is New Year at the Pier. Tell us all about it. New Year at the Pier, and the subtitle is a Rosh Hashanah story. And my editor and I were talking, and she said, How about a Jewish book? What do you have in you? And I said, Well, one of the things I love to do every year is when the temple opens its door at Rosh Hashanah and everybody goes down to the pier in Manhattan Beach, California, I go with them. And I just love Tashlik. It's just one of my favorite times of the year. I'm a sort of an outdoor spiritual person. And there's so much of me connected to this particular ritual. It means so much to me. And, you know, Alvino Melkei, the most beautiful, beautiful song. So I felt like I could write a picture book about that. Now, 34 drafts later, <laughs> where it was rejected by that editor huh. and that house. The one who had asked for it. Yes. It's interesting, sorry to interrupt no. you, but it's interesting that they asked you because... Rosh Hashanah books aren't necessarily an easy sell since there's a limited market for them. So it's interesting that they asked Well, she didn't ask me for a Rosh Hashanah book. Uh-huh. She said a Jewish book. Uh-huh. But even that is a limited market. Right. That's the perception. And that so, was a major house. I'm, I'm, so they asked you for that. They asked that's me. very interesting. And I worked on it, and it just wasn't what she was looking for. Okay. So then I called up my other editor at Dom, and I said, you wouldn't be interested in a Jewish picture book, would you? And she goes, oh, I just got out of a meeting where we were saying we wanted a Jewish picture book. I mean, it was that amazing. I said, really? Okay. <laughs> and I sent it to her, and I sold it a week later. Wow. It was just bizarre. And now, so how sure was that? Dial Pen- Pen- okay. Penguin. Um, uh-huh. So Dial Books for Young Readers. And um, the painful part then began again. <laughs> where Now you had to edit it? It was first written for, it was, um, the main character was like 10, and she was a girl. And my editor decided, for whatever reason, that it was two old main characters. She wanted a younger picture book. And I thought, it's fine. (laughs) And I didn't say that to her, but she said very kindly, we really understand if you don't want to do this, and we'd be glad to cancel your contract. She wasn't threatening me at all, but Uh I thought, okay, okay, I'll try. (laughs) (laughs) And actually, I think it works better. Mm -hmm. I was forced to kind of bring it down to an essence Mm -hmm. of what is this if it's for a child who can't write down the things he did wrong? And what would those things be? And how would you work out for a child what forgiveness is? And how does apology feel when your mom is apologizing to you? Mm -hmm. So um, it it brought some depth to the book that wasn't there before. And then she liked it. It made you really think harder about it. So editors are probably usually right, even when it doesn't feel like it at first. You know, I have to say, with every good review, I keep uh-huh. emailing her, thank you, thank you, thank you, I'm sorry if I ever whined. You know? <laughs> and that was Lori Hornick, and she's uh-huh. wonderful, and she has since been promoted twice, and oh. so my new editor is there Jessica is. Garrison, who uh-huh. is wonderful. Terrific. Okay, so they originally said to you, we just want a Jewish book, and you picked Rosh Hashanah. But do you have other Jewish books in you, if somebody asked you that again? I actually do. I just sat down today with Natalie Blitt. (laughs) From PJ Library? (laughs) She's picked up my book for PJ Library, and Mm -hmm. she asked me what else I had in me. And I was telling her about an idea I had based on my son's bar mitzvah. And she said she's really interested in younger books, which was so freeing because the length of that book was intimidating me. And today I was going, I couldn't do this younger kids because it's the concept Mm -hmm. which was tikkun olam olam. that's right it's Mm -hmm. the whole thing about community service Mm -hmm. um i can do that so that's what's in my mind right now i have a couple of books in line ahead of it but um i would love to the jewish book world has been so incredibly welcoming i (laughs) I have had five books before this Uh and i have to say that Okay, so I have a favorite, favorite story about this. Okay. When I was in college, I read a study about a professor who all the students were told, unbeknownst to him, that when he walks to the right side of the stage, pay complete attention to him, and he walks to the left, ignore him. And by the end of the hour, he was on the very right side of the stage. 
completely there because that's where he got the great feedback, uh -huh. right, from their eyes. It's probably all subconscious. He didn't even know he was doing it, right? So in the same way, I just want to write Jewish books from now on because, attention. oh, my God, it's not just the attention. It's the kindness and the outreach and the... Um, Oh, well, we'll help you, and let us spread the word, and do you know so-and-so? It's just a galaxy I had no idea about. Mm. It's Mishpacha. Including yours, <laughs> yes, exactly. So yeah. what were your other books about? Were they picture books? I have several picture books and then a novel and poems for teens. Mm -hmm. um, so my first one was To Rabbit Town, and it was about a child who... Uh, goes, runs away and lives with rabbits and slowly turns into one. And that was through Scholastic. Uh -huh. Beautifully illustrated by Robin Spowart. And then a book called The Night Horse. And that was in um, rhymed iambic pentameter, like, like Shakespeare writes. And uh -huh. that was based on an assignment from my longtime mentor, Myra Cohn Livingston. I worked uh -huh. with her for 12 years. Uh -huh. And um, that was also through Scholastic. And that was illustrated by Vera Rosenberry. And then a book for Knopf called It's Not My Turn to Look for Grandma. It's a funny book with lots of alliteration and uh, metaphor, illustrated by George Booth, who does cartoons for The New Yorker. Uh -huh. And then I have a CD with a lot of stories on, on that, that that won some awards and a, and a fiddle tune. I play the fiddle. Oh, you play the fiddle. How nice. And then I sold the book in Canada that no one's ever going to read <laughs> about a in child. In Canada, will they read it? It's just you uh, It's a very small or, publisher in oh, Canada. Okay. I really doubt it. But yeah. it's, about, it's called Dear House Goodbye, about a child who moves. moves. And then a book called Girl Coming In for a Landing, which is my novel in poems. Oh, I've heard that. Yes. And that got some awards. Mm -hmm. And that was about a 13-year-old girl who's sort of dealing with, um, she likes to write, and who is she? Um, I'm currently working on a book called 13, 14, Fat Teen, also a novel in poems, about a 15-year-old who's dealing with issues of spirituality and friendship and being fat and figuring out her life at mm -hmm. 15. Mm -hmm. So Great.